Hello everyone and welcome to the Nimiton. Today we're going to do something quite special. Holiday special, I should say, because it's spooky time. It's late October and I've been really looking forward to do a talk on something that honestly I never saw myself talking about before. It's going to be the Psychonaut Field Manual by the interesting Arch Trader Blue Fluke with his more than equally interesting name. Now, I uh, was a big fan of Psychonauts as a kid. The game, I should say. Uh, I had it when I was around 14 or so, and it really stood out to me. It's a very interesting time. I got really into Psychonetics uh, prior to that, so the game was ideal, we could say. So we're going to look at this Psychonaut field manual. Preemptively, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that this is a Chaos Magic field manual. So when you see Kabbalistic imagery or Hermetic imagery that technically doesn't fit, I'm going to go ahead and let you know you're probably right. I'm not trying to be that guy, I'm just saying yes. They kind of mutate and uh, deconstruct things in such a way that they don't really fit their original intention. But that's just something we're going to have to deal with. It's going to be a little cringy. Nothing against Blue Fluke or anything like that, but it is going to be a little uh, odd at times. Something that really makes you want to grit your teeth and just look away. And uh, if you do that, well, look, I appreciate you clicking on the video. It's been nice to have you thus far. I apologize, but let's kind of get into it. So, of course, we're going to start from the bottom. So, level one, belief is a tool. As in the concept that belief in and of itself constructs one's reality. Really uh, interesting concept. Also something very prevalent in this work. Which is that no matter what you do, it's all about what you believe works. You got to know that it works. Forget all this impression and recipient stuff and the idea of engaging with something that's higher than yourself. No, it's just all about that egotistical impression into the upward nature of reality. Because everybody can do that. So, we immediately begin with a nice Freemason with his skull and crossbones apron, which should actually be a downward facing triangle. I've seen that apron before. But this idea of stepping out of oneself. And we have a side quest. This is our first mission upon ourselves other than what was directly given to us. Lucid dreaming uh, individuals, if you've learned to instate lucid dreaming on yourself, uh, to be honest with you, I don't feel like it's really that amazing, but it says that uh, it's a way to interpret subconscious concepts. Very Jungian thing. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a guess that we're gonna see a lot of Jung and his overall philosophy in this video. And that's only because I've currently been working on a big Jung video for a fantastic patron, Danny. So, we're already on the level two. If you believe we're on the level two, unlock your mind, particularly through Gnosis. I gotta pause, I've been kind of elated this whole time. Gotta, gotta stop right here. Gnosis is not something that I see as so simple as a concept of like focus and involvement and intention and all these things. Gnosis is a very big deal of divine totality and connection, but I'm gonna go ahead and guess that we're about to look at this from the, yes. Calm down, focus, kill the noise, focus again. All right, whatever, I get it. A lot of people see Gnosis as this like personal state that is very easily achievable through the idea of concentration and simplicity and disconnecting from the external forces. All right, I get that. However, I did want to say step two is boss because meditating on a candle is actually like a uh, big Kabbalistic thing. Uh, it, it exists twice in terms of its repetition in the Zohar. It's a very interesting scenario. It's explained in action and in metaphysics. It's a really big deal because the candle flame, like the wick, the blue black light, the white light, the invisible yet kind of present light around the outside of the fire. All these re represent the four metaphysical layers of the tree of life. You know, the uh, Malchuth, uh, the Midot, the Supernal Triad, and of course the Divine Unity, uh, particularly above that, which is the invisible light. Really cool. I uh, like how it's kind of connecting these things together. I don't know how far they went to try to make this connection, but it's interesting. We are immediately on to supernal oh my gosh we're immediately on to supernal senses the third eye opening visualization and projection starting with the philosopher's stone are you serious dude i like this author hey by the way the uh the whole comic so to say this whole comic representation of chaos magic is going to be 
in the description because I feel like it's fun to look at for anyone who's into this sort of thing. I will say the visualization and projection of the Philosopher's Stone is odd. Why'd you do that? I really want to know. I want to, I wish I could talk to the author. He probably has no idea who I am, obviously. So like, I don't really know him either, but I'm super interested in why he felt like this was the right direction to go. Unless it's just, wait, required tech. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and let you know right now, Chaos Magic, along with some of the current Rabbanon and just individuals in general who like to talk about this type of subject matter, they love the idea of this like basic computer terminology to help communicate with people as if they understand the idea of downloading uh, better than they understand the idea of integration, mental integration, which they do. They do get it better, but gosh, does it feel so lazy at times. Nothing against the artist or myself or anyone. It's just, it, it does. It's just not the same. It, it's the total death of the mystical aesthetic, which I get is the idea of chaos magic in and of itself. But uh, man... And we're right on the tarot. The right hand of Eris methodology. Okay, this is kind of cool. Coming to possible outcomes, selecting an outcome, and then setting yourself up through it via programming. Again, with the computer terminology. Oh, man. Let's take a look. I want to look at his card designs. These must be private card designs. Oh, okay, real quick. Hang on. I'll tell you how this is so obviously hermetic. If you look at the magician card, you can see that bet is associated with zero one instead of a left because hermetically a left tends to be tied to the first bridge between kether and hokwan which is seen as like a zero zero because kether and hokwan are directly connected to each other in the sense that they're both of the absolutic nature they're indistinguishable ultimately so they use a left as a silent letter so to say as a zero zero and bet becomes zero one that is not how that actually works unless you follow like this very Kralian basis of mythos, which I mean, cool if you do, whatever, because it was all about belief, right? So who gives a crap anyway? I also want to call BS. Also, a clever detail on uh, the magician, they have right foot forward, hangman, they have left foot forward. Kind of an interesting idea of pre-existent before revelation, having revelation, and then coming into the nature of the magician. Very cool. Oh, and then we have this cute little sigil instruction. You know, I've actually talked about sigil instruction before in Grimoire's Magic Sigils and more. It's not one of my favorite videos, but uh, I enjoy this type of basic methodology. Also, the fact that he used the letters as a way to create a character rather than just using like a literal sigil layout. You know, like uh, the square of Saturn or something like that. Place it numerically in certain spaces through the common numerology. That's kind of cool. Servitors themselves are something that I don't really get into because I see it as such a weird way of analysis. You know, people make these servitors, these thought forms as a way to engage with the external environment or a way to affect change in themselves. But it's just so, feels so semi-childish, so irresponsible. You know, like why not just take responsibility for oneself and engage into where you feel a lack is of your own accord and design and power and desire you know like you don't need to make this whole artificial like loop around you know i feel like it's actually slower you know man look at that that's ominous mm, i love it the advice to drink some booze is actually strangely uh, a good idea in fact i would agree with that entirely that having a little bit of a little bit of wine will cut off what we might say the self-involving individual such that if you're creating some artificiality and a little bit of booze will cut you away from that you know very quickly it'll kind of diminish the experience because of how we as people engage with reality and we're already on to the first big secret oh my gosh we're trucking trucking through it coagula and solve terrestrial and celestial Oh my gosh, the colors, the Nefesh and the Neshama. Where's the Ruach? This is level five, right? Yeah, there's five levels of the spirit. Or maybe the... Maybe the Yin-Yang is supposed to be the upper two levels. 
Man, I don't even know. It, it feels, it's so, what do they call it? It's so minimalistic in its presentation that at times I feel like he's a genius and at other times I feel like I might just be giving people too much credit. Because these are some of the most basic like occult symbols in the world at this point. You know what I mean? All right, now that we have the basics, it's time to dive into the heavy stuff. I mean, dude, we just got started. We just got started. I, I'm already on step five and you're just going to throw me into the heavy stuff right out the gate. I don't have time for this. What are you doing? Okay, oh, okay, now we're analyzing the conscious faculties, which are very Jung, again, quite strange. Man, I don't want to be this guy. All right, real quick, I'm going to be a little bit of a complainer. I've already been kind of a complainer, but I'm going to be a big complainer for a second. You have hey as a number seven. Why do you have hey as the number seven? Is it because hey alludes to that path that you have highlighted on the tree, or is it because hey is the number five? Because both of those are incorrect. Oh, whatever. Okay. Um, oh, the Kabbalah maps the mind. No, the Kabbalah maps a lot of things. Ooh, look at that. That's so pretty. Dude, I love this comic book style. I like this like hard black edge on everything. Uh, these kind of poppy colors and light shading. That's cool. I will say this ferothic connection to the chakras is kicking my butt. I can hardly stand it. Tiferetis to the heart. Yeah. Gabor and Chesed are not to the throat. Duh, you just have around the face. I'm guessing it's going to be the mouth or something. Whatever, you sold. Right place. Yeah, phallic. Or at least to the organs, so to say. Makuth. Yeah, hold on, that soccer actually to the hips. But, or I should say the thigh. Hmm, we're already on to chapter two. I thank you all for joining me, especially my patrons. And I hope you all have a very happy holiday. Happy holiday.